This video is a discussion of what may be a previously overlooked source of interference to FPV systems, that is first person view systems used for radio control models and in particular uh, interference sources that occur during FPV racing where you have a number of pilots flying at the same time and a number of systems in operation at the same time. Previously we have been looking carefully to avoid adjacent channel interference but I want to stress that what we're going to discuss here today is not related to adjacent channel interference. Adjacent channel interference occurs when we pick channels that are too close to one another and the receivers that we use are not able to distinguish between those channel frequencies and we get some bleed over from uh, an adjacent channel. That is not what IMD is. We're going to discuss IMD which is a different phenomenon. There are a number of uh, deficiencies that can occur in the receivers which are relatively inexpensive that we use for FPV flying and IMD is a major one of those. Intermodulation distortion or IMD is a well-known phenomenon in radio communication. A Google search or a textbook search will reveal a great deal of information about that and I encourage you if you have interest in more of the technical details to do that. Intermodulation distortion can be thought of as a result of two or more strong signals entering a receiver and producing new frequencies that in some cases interfere with the desired frequency that we want to receive from our transmitter. Be clear that this is a result of new frequencies being generated in our receiver. The most problem, problematic uh, situation is with, with what is called third order IMD and that's what we'll uh, consider here. The conditions in which we do FPV racing can be particularly bad from an IMD standpoint. That's because we often have two, three, four, five, six, maybe even more transmitters all close to one another uh, physically and close to receivers in some, some cases. And many cases the transmitters are quite strong in power. IMD is generally not a problem for a single flyer flying by himself without other uh, people in the same band. IMD can also be produced in transmitters however our testing has shown that most of the troubles that we see if not all of them are uh, a result of problems in the receiver and again these are deficiencies in the receiver that cause IMD to be a problem. Next we'll show a demo that illustrates IMD showing it with actually happening with uh, some FPV systems that we have. Hello, we're going to do a demonstration um, that shows intermodulation distortion or IMD. We have here a quadcopter that is uh, powered up and transmitting video signal on 5945 megahertz. Here we have a receiver set to the same frequency and we can see we get a clear video picture. We have two transmitters on frequencies that we've selected that will produce IMD or intermodulation distortion. Here we see the display with just my quadcopter powered and it's transmitting at 5945 megahertz. The receiver is set to 5945 megahertz and it's receiving a nice clear signal. We'll power up one of the problem frequency transmitters 
even bring it close and it doesn't do anything to our image. It's, the image is fine still. And that was a 25 milliwatt transmitter, by the way. Now we'll, we'll use a 200 milliwatt transmitter. Bring it close. It as well doesn't cause any problem because it's separated in frequency by enough of a guard band to uh, prevent adjacent channel interference. Now I'll leave the 200 milliwatt transmitter on which is, by the way, at 5860 megahertz. I'll turn on the, the smaller one, which is at 5780. And when I do that, we get interference, uh, in some cases severe, caused by intermodulation distortion in the receiver. There are many frequencies that can be mixed together in a receiver and cause IMD products. But to simplify a bit, we'll consider the third order IMD products because they're generally stronger than higher order products. And for the purposes of trying to identify frequencies that will help us avoid IMD products in our FPV racing, we'll consider the two-tone third order IMD products products. The equations here shown define the relationship between two potential interferers and our desired frequency which is F1. F1 is the frequency at which we're operating our FPV vehicle and F2 and F3 are the frequencies of other participants in our race that could potentially cause IMD products. And the next slide shows a spreadsheet that we made that will help us to pick frequencies that we can use concurrently in a race to minimize or hopefully eliminate IMD products being produced for any of the participants in the race. There are several steps that we can take to reduce IMD products in FPV racing. We can choose frequencies that don't cause IMD products for any of the participants in the race. We can use less powerful transmitters since we often use more powerful transmitters for FPV racing than are needed and the more powerful transmitters cause overloading in the receiver which is what produces IMD. We can use high gain directional antennas aimed just at our quad. We can use attenuation on the input of our receivers. This helps because whatever factor our receiver signal is reduced by, the IMD products, the third order IMD products, are reduced by three times that factor. So for instance, if we use a 5 dB attenuator on the input of our receiver, the IMD products are reduced by 15 dB. We have a demo in the next slide to illustrate this. We can also use a mix of right and left hand circularly polarized antennas that will reduce the strength of potential interferers in our races. And we can use better FPV receivers that have better IMD performance. And it would hopefully we'll be able to test receivers in this respect and make recommendations in the future. Now we've put a uh a 5 dB attenuator on the input of the receiver. Uh, it's improved the situation. There still is some interference, but the idea of the attenuator is because these are called third order IMD products, the distortion products go down, are reduced three times faster than the desired products. So with a 5 dB attenuator, we'll, we are attenuating our desired signal from the quadcopter by 5 dB, but we're at, uh, reducing the IMD products by 15 dB. So this is one possible way to help us uh, avoid the IMD problem, and just to demonstrate this. It seems as though the problem of IMD products has not been considered 
for FPV racing. And of course, there are many causes of interference that can plague FPV racing. Not all will be IMD. Whether or not we have IMD products is highly dependent on our receiver design, our transmitter strengths, the distances between transmitters and receivers, and the general environment. In our testing, we have seen that if the distance between potential interfering transmitters and our ground station was 100 feet or less, the potential for serious IMD interference existed. That's a condition that easily can occur in FPV racing. Thank you.